ông quay cho ông chuẩn bị đẹp bạc cả to khai tâm đại ca thì sẽ mặc cả hay đòi với cả chuẩn từ cầm mình sẽ bị cả việc đầy lụn nồn chía đầm mây miền đảo cả to cả tăng xung đột đầy đầu cho buộc sạ xây steel header xung chơi Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. B. Victor Kope, someone could look in. Good afternoon, Mr. Heather. Tuesday, look, Heather. I am um, going to change my ways questioning you. What I will do is read you a passage from your book, from your article, I'm sorry. More, precise, more precisely, your article, Racism, Marxism, Labeling, and Genocide. I will ask the President's League to have a court officer give you a copy of this specific article. What I will do is I will read from this article after having given all the RN numbers uh, 11 passages and then I'm going to ask a very interesting question when you wrote it uh, and I'm going to ask whether you have direct factual information without expressing an opinion or speculating um, whether you have any other factual information to call this particular passage. You get my drift, Mr. Heather. Thank you, Mr. Heather. Mr. President, I will start with my first quote from document E131-1. Slash 13.3. As mentioned, it's your article Racism, Marxism, Labeling and Genocide in Ben Kim's report. I'd like to start with page 4 of your article English ERN 0073 French. Barang min zero zero eight zero two eight zero one from bay zone moy. Khmer zero zero eight zero four from bay from bay five five three from from bay four. If everything goes well, it's also will also appear on the screen. You write and I quote as follows: While challenging. His theoretical and historical categories. This review also confirms Keenan's conclusions by examining many of the same sources and same kinds of sources used by him. These interviews of Cambodians who were CPK members when he was in power. This review, like Keenan, interviewed in considerable numbers in the first years of the collapse of the they also include confessions extracted from birds in the UK cadre by interrogators over the National CPK Security Service S21 Porcelain and maintained after 1979 in the archives of the Tools from the Genocide Museum in which Keenan and this review have conducted research on numerous occasions since 1980. Re-examination of these sources suggests that Keenan's views of the confessions is patchy and selective, and that his use of interview material is sometimes tendentious. This review also raises questions about selectivity in Keenan's use of known confession documentary ประบาดโลกเคนนั้นเลยไอ้กระดาษได้มันแม่นเชียร์จำลองสารพิษเพียบไม่ได้ไอ้กระดาษได้แปะปนังกับปราย would you be able to expand on the word patchy and selective? 
Never mind. I continue. Uh, no, I, I, no, I don't even ask the question. Mr. Hedman, uh, relying on direct factual information without expressing an opinion or speculating, is there other factual information um, as to the information that I just read to you? Mr. President, this is Mr. Hedder's book or article commenting on Mr. Kiernan's book. You are not in my respective submission, going, respectful submission, going to be assisted in hearing what Mr. Hedder has to say about Mr. Kiernan's book and Mr. Kiernan's use of his sources. It goes back to exactly the same point that Judge Laverne has now, on behalf of the trial chamber, ruled upon on two occasions in the 20 minutes before we took lunch. Also, the extract that was read was not supported by a footnote. If you look at footnote 5 that's the footnote. So the portion that's been read to Mr. Hedder, inadmissible though it is in my submission anyway, is not even supported by a footnote upon which evidence can be given. So I object on both those grounds. If you're quoting an extract, make it relevant and give a footnote. But you hearing what Mr. Hedder has to say about what Mr. Keelan's research methods are is expert evidence. It's inadmissible, Steven, it's irrelevant, Steven and I object. I wrote a passage, I asked the question, did you write this? I the exact same line on the Please tell me what you បាទនៅខ្ញុំតោះនឹងសម្ហាងហេតុនៃសេចក្តីខ្ញុំតោះរបស់ដំណើរថាបញ្ញាចំពោះសំណួរចុងក្រោយដែលស្រួលឡើង
Keenan collates the wide variety of contemporary and subsequent accounts that demonstrate that up until the purge, conditions in the East Zone were generally, relatively speaking, less bad and deteriorated less rapidly than in most other parts of Cambodia. It seems possible to attribute the difference, at least in part, to the leadership style and political proclivities of East Zone Secretary Sao Pung. However, in comparing the East with other CPK structures and leaders, particularly the Southwest Zone of Damok, Kieran overdraws his case and essentializes that these structures give him a false coherence, putting himself through numerous convolutions in order to do so. His construct of the East Zone as a moderate pro-Vietnamese, possibly even orthodox Marxist entity, is totally dependent on its cadre and geographical subdivisions in the East Zone only. Oui, Monsieur le Président, j'ai un autre problème. Je n'ai pas le bon ERN en français. En tout cas, celui qui m'a été donné par le traducteur n'est pas le bon ERN. Est-ce que vous pourriez répéter l'ERN en français, s'il vous plaît In this regard, Keenan collects the wide variety of contemporary and subsequent accounts that demonstrate that up until that purge, conditions in the East Zone were generally, and relatively speaking, less bad and deteriorated less rapidly than in most other parts of Cambodia. It seems plausible to attribute this difference at least in part to the leadership style and political proclivities of East Zone Secretary Sao Pim. However, in comparing the East with other CPK structures and leaders, particularly the Southwest Zone of Tamok, Keenan overdraws his case and essentializes these structures to give, him, to give them a false coherence, putting himself through numerous convolutions in order, in order to do so. His construct of the East Zone as a moderate pro-Vietnamese, possibly even orthodox Marxist entity, is tautologically dependent on its cadre and geographical subdivisions, being East Zone only when some evidence can be found to substantiate the characterization. It also relies on testimony from former East Zone cadre about an animosity between them and cadre from other zones, particularly the South West. Did you write this, Mr. Header? Yes. បាទតំណងជាមិនមានការផ្លាស់ប្ដូរ <coughs> I simply read a passage from his book and asked the witness if he wrote it. Nothing else. He answered the question. And now I'm asking not to comment on uh, Keenan. I'm not interested in that. But just if you 
be able to give direct factual information without expressing an opinion or speculating um, whether there is any other factual information as to um, this particular passage. Mr. President, I don't know if... I don't know if I'm missing something, and I don't know if this comes from lack of experience or what. You've ruled on about four occasions Can I explain this? Again. This book, or this article, is Mr. Hedder commenting on Mr. Kiernan's book. The passage that has been confirmed is about Mr. Kiernan's comparison of structures and leaders in one zone with another. It's about an opinion being expressed that Kiernan overdraws his case. It's making reference to numerous convolutions. It's making reference to an opinion that something is a construct. It's making reference to something being plausible, which is an expression of opinion. It's not allowed in accordance with your ruling repeated on four occasions. Now, can I make this general objection, observation? I anticipate that it would be my respectful submission that most, if not all, questions the defence asked based on a book where Mr Hedder is expressing his opinion on what Mr. Kiernan thinks, or what Mr. Kiernan wrote, or what Mr. Kiernan opines, is inadmissible. Now, why is the message not getting through? I'm doing the exact same thing as the prosecutor has been doing. Reading a passage from a, an article, asking the witness, did he write it? and then asking him for factual information to possibly corroborate yes or no. I'm not asking about his opinion about Mr. Keenan, I'm just reading the passage and doing the exact same thing as the prosecutor. Mr. President, I would like to tell Thank you, President. The Chamber accepts the prosecutor's submission that it has made uh, multiple rulings on this precise matter. Uh, the issue is this. The material on which Mr. Hedder was commenting in his article uh, is not relevant to our inquiries. So please, no more questions based on this article. Article, which in any event was presumably written uh, by Mr. Hedder in his capacity uh, as an expert, and he is appearing today as a witness to testify as to what he, as a witness, saw, heard, observed uh, during uh, the period that the Chamber is concerned with. No more questions based on this article. Thank you. Mr. Heather. Have you done any research? Have you read articles, written articles, on events that happened in the East Zone in 1975? 
Um, we we'll certainly have interview material on that. Um, I've not written anything. It's alluded to in here, I believe, in, in this review article. Um, and there may be some allusions, allusions to it elsewhere, but in terms of a substantial focused piece of academic work, no. The research is there. The article or the book remains to be written. Have you done specific research on matters of security within the East so questions relating, relating to uh, members, DK cadres of the East Zone? Yes. Would you be able to tell us um, what your research has provided? Um, yes, the security office structure and hierarchy in the East was broadly similar to what it was elsewhere. And that is to say, there was a zone security office, um, which somewhat uh, uh, which somewhat as was the case in Phnom Penh, at the center that is, at S21, uh, was a kind of integral part or subordinate piece of the general staff, such that the um, zone security office, coded S79, uh, was directly subordinated to the East Zone General Staff, uh, which was seated in Prevang, Prevang provincial town of Prevang province. Um, and like S21 in the center, um, initially dealt um, if not primarily, then largely with military personnel from within the Khmer Rouge's own ranks, in this case the East Zone ranks, East Zone military ranks as opposed to the National Armed Forces, um, and subsequently primarily with East Zone cadre. Um, further down the line, as elsewhere, there were security offices at the sector in every sector, um, and in every district. Um, as was true in other parts of the country, although rather inconsistently, um, there was often a linkage of some kind between the sector or district security office and the um, armed forces at those levels, that is to say the sector army, the district army, um, or an interpenetration of the cadre such that the chairperson of a security office would be a former uh, sometimes disabilitated uh, military cadre. Uh, in other instances, the chairpersons of these offices were former heads of leading cadre's bodyguard units, the so-called defense units. Um, and as was true generally throughout the country, um, the further one went down this formal security office structure, the more the security offices dealt with ordinary people, um, and the more generally speaking um, decisions about executions of people detained were 
primarily made at the district level, sometimes in consultation in formal terms at least with the sector. Um, and then beneath all of that was the, uh, the cooperative or sub-district level militia. The guerrillas, to use the conventional FBIS translation, um, the chlo, sometimes just rendered in English to sort of add to the aura of the word, um, who, as elsewhere in the country, arresting people, sometimes killed them themselves. So it's not in overall, it's, it's yeah, put it the other way, I put it positively. Again, an overall structure and organization, uh, very similar to what existed elsewhere. Um, I can add that at the sector level, the security office answers normally directly to the party secretary, sometimes the party secretary's deputy. And at the district level, the same pattern generally seems to have obtained. Um, <coughs> in your research, uh, have you found any factual information um, indicating that the policy, uh, the general policy of the CPK was executed in the East Zone in the same manner as in other zones? Uh, Mr. President, I only object to the way in which the question is being asked. It's been broadly, uh, in terms of this introduction, in your research. You may recall when I used the word research on day two of my examination, there were two objections. Um, you will recall that in my questioning I raised interviews that Mr. Hedder had conducted or from any other direct factual information, but to use research in my respectful submission is too broad and invites almost inevitable opinion evidence. Phrase. <coughs> in your interviews and reading of documents, um, do you have factual information which indicates that the execution of the general policy General CPK policy in the East was the same as in other countries. Um, I would like to address I believe the answer appears on many T-shirts. Same, same, but better. Um, in the sense that um, policy was implemented in a manner that was more in line with what was on the face of center policy. Um, so that the um, the relative moderation that I mention elsewhere in the article, the review article, um, can be attributed to adherence to that center policy on the face of it. Uh, rather than attributed to a deviation from it. But with that caveat, um, the answer is still yes, that um, there were widespread executions, maybe not as widespread in some, as in some other places, and executions for the same kinds of reasons um, through the same kinds of processes that took place uh, elsewhere in the country. The interviews that you had, the documents that you studied, um, did they provide you with factual information as to who in the East Zone was responsible for, the, for these 
Um, responsible is a big word. Um, I certainly have data from the, inter from interviews over the years um, that identify by name some of the members of the security office, uh, the, the, the members of the general staff committee, the, um, level, um, the names of chairpersons of sector and district uh, security offices, um, and there is data in the interviews, in at least some instances, that says that their formal positions uh, included actual authority uh, commensurate with their formal position. Are you able to tell us some more your interviews and your studying of the documents? Um, what role of any South Pym play? Yes, South Pym play. Yes, South Pym play. 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 South Well, I, I, I think that the formal notion according to which the Secretary of the Zone was in overall charge of all affairs in the zone is sustained in broad strokes by the interview information and the non-confession documentary information such as it's available. Um, so in, in that regard, um, in general terms, um, he seems to have exercised the kind of authority over the zonal security apparatus that was indicated by his formal position, um, and thereby indirectly over more local security offices, again with the caveat that to the extent that non-confession data material, I avoid using the word evidence, um, is available, it does not seem to be the case that the formal requirement that all executions right down to the very lowest levels in the so-called grassroots, or if you prefer, in the bases, to use a more literal translation, um, that all of those executions were decided by the standing committee of the zone committee. That does not appear to have been the case in the East Zone, generally speaking, as it was not generally the case in any of the other zones either. Do you have any factual information from your interviews or your studying of the documents um, about the role of East Zone troops during the evacuation of Phnom Penh? Mr. President, I just want to go back to the parameters of Mr. Hedder's evidence. I've set this out before in terms of the memorandum that was circulated by the court, and indeed our Judge Cartwright has also referred uh, to this. The clearest exposition was in the email of the 3rd of June, uh, 3rd of July rather. The question shall be directed primarily to evidence the witness gathered either during the interviews he conducted or the evidence uh, he accumulated during the research. And, and these words I underline, which forms the basis for the books or articles authored by him. The point I'm making is that for the last, I think, four questions, there's been no reference to uh, any part of any book. Um, 
Um, there's been no reference to any book or extract from a book Now, the, the risk this presents has been illustrated by the last answer. Mr. Hedder was talking about non-confession documentary information and used this phrase, and this is why these questions have to be so tightly phrased. And it was about something. In general terms, he seems to have exercised authority. Now, when we start using those phrases, in general terms, he seems to have, we're getting into opinion evidence. So, I do object to broad sweeping references to broad sweeping research or interviews without any specific reference to any passage that Mr. Hedder has authored. Now, the reason my examination was so tightly prepared was for every question I asked, there was an introduction by reference to an extract from a book that Mr. Heather had authored. And that meant that when I asked in the supplemental question, is there other interview material or factual information to corroborate? You as the judges were able to have a piece of information authored by Mr. Hedder as your starting point. But when the starting point is, in effect, and I understand why, and I don't blame my learned friend for it, but when the starting point for the questions is a fishing expedition into Mr. Hedder's brain, we have real risks of opinion evidence being extracted. That risk is lessened, if not obviated, when there is a specific passage put to Mr. Hedder from a book, because you're then grounding yourself in Mr. Hedder. You're grounding yourself in accordance with your own direction in books by him. But if we proceed for the rest of this afternoon with fishing expedition questions with no reference, it is inevitable in my respect for submission that we will be in opinion territory as illustrated by the last answer. So I ask that Mr. Copey be directed to ensure that his questioning attaches to, to quote your direction, a book authored by Mr. Hedder or other material. I'm not allowed to use Mr. Hedder's book. I ask for questions based on his factual knowledge. That is not allowed. But let me translate for the public what's really happening here, uh, so that they understand the um, objection of the prosecution. I'm entering a territory that the prosecution wants to, to, to uh, stay away as far as possible from. And we all know what area in the 75, 79 we are not allowed to enter. That is the things that happen in the East Zone. I think I am perfectly entitled to ask questions relating to the studying of documents and um, interviews done by the, the witness about what he can tell us as a witness about what happened in the East Zone. So, this objection is not about technicalities. Don't let public not be fooled by this. This is about me entering the East Zone and the things that happened in the East Zone. Well, can I respond just very briefly? Council make submissions to judges. Counts do, council do not show vote for the public. This is not about politics, this is about evidence. Had we been talking about a totally different subject, I would have made the same objection. But please, the council needs to be told it's not his function to explain your rulings to the public.
his function is to make legal submissions to you. Thank you, President. The Chamber reiterates its many rulings on this topic, and contrary to what uh, you have indicated, Mr. Kopi, uh, the rulings are concerned with ensuring that this witness gives testimony as a witness and not as an expert. In fact, uh, you were the first to insist on this when when uh, Mr. Hedder uh, first uh, started giving his testimony, uh, and the Chamber agrees with you on that topic. Please comply with the ruling that the Chamber gave in the message quoted by the prosecutors, uh, and if you cannot do that, then the President has asked me to indicate uh, that um, uh, as so many of the questions are uh, not relevant, uh, he may turn instead to Kyo Sampan and give the floor to him. Thank you, Mr. Kupan.
I will give it another and last try. I'm now going to the header to an article that you wrote. It's called the Assessing the Role of Senior Leaders in Democratic Countries of Ukraine. Cambodian Accountability is comparative to uh, I think you have it there. It is E 1.398. More specifically, Mr. Heather, I'm referring to a page in your article. ERN English For you it is page 36. More specifically, I will refer you to footnote It is French ERN 2948 uh, Khmer 0080815-6. So it's all relating to footnote I'm happy to read to you what is footnote 207 to, but I'm sure there is another objection. So I will just read to you the footnote to And I remind the chairman that I'm reading from the public document. The publicly available Various evidence implicates Heng Samrin and War Crimes, of Vietnamese committed by troops under his command during cross-border raids into Vietnam in 1977. Now you refer to your other book, page 104. Forty-two and hundred and forty-three. Didn't, did you in fact write this footnote, Mr. Yes. Would you be able to explain what you meant? What you mean with this footnote? Um, if I recall correctly, at this point in time, I'm referring um, to some interview material um, and maybe some confession material, probably also some confession material. Do you know which confession material Sorry. It should be in the other um, article, the review article. Unfortunately, the review article has been retyped, so it doesn't have the same pagination as is in these footnotes. So I would have to leave through this in order to try and figure out what, um, what's referred to, what the reference back to this article, review article is. So you, you, you cannot say right now at this point which specific interviews, which specific documents, etc. Uh, you refer to in this particular footnote, is that correct? Um, 
Well, if we follow the footnotes, we should be able to find the footnotes back. Or as they will take us. Or as they will take us. Or as they will take us. Amy, uh, Mr. Hedder, it would be an idea if you could have a look look at it uh, in, the in the break. I think it's pages 53 and 54 of the review article. Um, this is based on actually in part on Vietnamese documents identifying the unit involved and in part on um, interview data identifying things in charge of that unit and putting those two facts together Put him in command of the unit that is identified as having carried attacks. Um, and um, I think there's also then the inadmissible citations to confessions. Uh, it goes on for several pages, so it starts on page 53 and runs through to page 58, but I can't link because of the change in the pagination. I can't be absolutely sure which exact passages in the review article are referred to in the book chapter. That's the, the reassessing document. If they're saying, I suppose, that that those kinds of data, again, I will remain neutral on the question of whether the data constitutes what other people in this room call evidence. Um, that kind of data is also available in subsequent Vietnamese publications or semi-publications and subsequent interviews done by me. So I, I don't feel uncomfortable about standing by you know, what was based earlier on less data and is based on now more data than back then. I would like um, to turn your attention now to um, some passages in um, the book of uh, Ben Kinnan. Um, document E3 slash um, I have a copy for you uh, in respect to the passages that I would like to um, I would like <coughs> more spe I would like to read a few quotes. I would like to start with the first quote from this book <coughs> And it is on English, page 008, 008, and 9, French ERN 0066387, for you, it is page 67 of the book. I would like, with your leave, Mr. President, to present a copy.
องจมูกจมูกสมรัยรือเฮยถ้ามันอ่านในญาติไอ้ลูกไม่จะวีนวลชี้ไอ้เลือสิเพื่อนอีพุ่นนะบ่เป็นขนนั้นหมกซัวในดาวสะตีรูปนิตีไฮบานรุมลึกลูกเวียท้าประสันเบอร์ลูกตุ่มน้องมันเมียนสมนูสารทิศสำคัญสำคัญไอ้หน้าได้เมียนไปยาวนงกาปรังไพรนำไปกาเปียกงไกรบอลลูกตีนุ่งอ่องยิ้มแรงนั่งดอลวิติกาจุนเตอกรมมิจวีกาเปียกไดลูกคือสมพรดำไปดำเนินออกกะนงกาปตอกาตังสมนูไปปลุกลูกมันมาปราปราเปรียบเลี้ยดำเนินประสัตเพียบในเปรียบเลี้ยได้อ่องยิ้มแรงใจเอาดีหายไปเจ้าชบาท้าได้ซาระเบียบประสัวดังดาวระเบียบนี้ได้ปราปราเปรียบเลี้ยเขียเขียได้มันมีประสิทธิภาพนี้คืออ่องยมแรมันพอดอลปีวิลีเอาอีตีให้ประจำบัตรอ่องยมแรงนักพอดอลปีดีกาจูนเตอร์กรมมีวิกาปีกระดิ่งลูกคือสมพรเนปิลไอเลนี่So now you're saying I'm also not allowed to use Ben Keenan's Ben Keenan's question. I'm really losing it now, Mr. President. This is Ben Keenan's book. The prosecution has asked many several questions in relation to this book. I have some questions. On factual information in this book, I was hoping the witness could, yes or no, corroborate these passages, factual passages, or, or about events in 1975 uh, from his own interviews and, and documentation, document study. So I'm doing now, I'm now exactly within the realm of how you think. I should interview this witness. So it was my point to to quote one passage of events in May 1975 and ask the witness if he has himself any factual knowledge coming from interviews or documents which could corroborate this. So no opinion, no opinion, uh, disqualification, just the usage of his book. More specifically, I'm asking about um, the, uh, the, the, the evacuation of Phnom uh, Penh in 1975. We're asking um, questions about a meeting at 20 May 1975, which has been the subject earlier of the same questions from, I think, the legal lawyers. So now I am um, I'm at a loss, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, only to uh, say that when I was examining on uh, examining Mr. Hedder on Mr. Keenan material, um, I was referring to how Pol Pot came to power. The reason I referred to that book was Mr. Hedder had himself referenced Mr. Keenan in one of his footnotes. But I think in fairness to my learned friend, that was not always the case. And I recall asking some general questions of Mr. Hedder about Krachi in 1973, um, basing it on Mr. Hedder's book. Uh, I think that's the only example where I used it. But uh, I, I don't object wholly to this. Um, if there's a next Mr. Mr. Copy makes between this subject matter and the issues in the trial then, um, for my part, and I, I don't wish to disrespect for the ruling, but for my part, I have no objection.
Mr. Corpy, the chamber intervened previously because that was not the manner in which you put the question to uh, Mr. Hedder. Uh, rather, your subsequent explanation uh, changed the basis on which you would put the questions. You are entitled to ask this witness questions of fact. You are not allowed to ask him to give his opinion on someone else's opinion. So if you can confine yourself to questions of fact, you may put question to Mr. But I, I hadn't even asked the question, Judge Barber. Right? Um, but look, just please you are in serious danger of losing the rest of your time. Please just get to the question that you wish to ask. Thank you. English ERN 0078529. French ERN 0006. 6387 <coughs> บังเกิดรัฐบาลละการตัวเลขาธิการกระดาษปีเรื่องลูกมีตวีเยอะตัวจูนท่าไทยมีนัดเพจ 67 มิสเตอร์ฮัลโหล Heng Samrin was born in 1934. Heng Samrin, the third of his children. Two sentences down the line. In 1962-63, he met Pol Pot in both locations. A little further down the line, down in that same paragraph, he then volunteered for the officer corps of the burgeoning revolutionary army and became a company commander. His promotion to command of the 126th Regiment and his prominent role in the capture of near Leung and Phnom Penh would not end his opposition to forces aligned with the center. And Mr. Hedder, I'm only asking you about factual information in relation to this specific passage. Without expressing any opinion or speculating, is there any factual information you have to corroborate this particular passage? Um, in, in general terms, yes. Um, I can't say that off the top of my head I'm absolutely clear that the regimental designation is the correct one. Um, but it certainly was a regiment. Um, one could quibble about the use of the word command. Technically, within the CPK structure, the party secretary was not the military commander of a unit. It was usually the deputy party secretary of a unit who was the military commander. Um, but yes, in general terms, um, it's in agreement with what I know from interviews and from confession documents. Let me uh, move now, Mr. Hedder, to page 31 of the same book. Um, 
English ERN 0067851010, French 00638758762, Khmer 00637406, ក្រុមមួយបៃប្រពលបួនសូមក្រុមមួយ the 173rd Chan Chakray. Min Kong Pol was his deputy. Chan Chakray division. Chan Chakray ជាអ្នកដែលមានអ្នកការនិយមសេលូសម្ដុតជាស្ទ um, again, I'm not sure I, my information gives exactly the same <coughs> uh, designations to the regiments of East Zone Division 1. Um, again, with the caveat about the distinction between military commander and party secretary, the secretary of Division 1 was John Jacques Ray. Um, the brother of Hang Sam Ren, I would quibble about the name, it's T-A-L, not T-H, A-L, Pal, not Tal, um, and again, he was party secretary, not military commander as such. Um, and my and my recollection of what I have been told is that Division Three, um, maybe some elements of Division Three were involved in the attack on Phnom Penh, or the advance into Phnom Penh, but most of Division Three actually um, was assigned to Svaidian provincial town and seized, if you'll excuse that translation, seized provincial, uh, Svaidian provincial town and was bivouacked there. Um, so in broad terms, yes, on certain maybe petty uh, issues of detail, I have some, some, some quibbles. Thank you. <coughs> Matt, two quotes together, two passages together from that same book. I'm now for you on pages 55 and 57. I will start with 55. Um, the other, uh, I'm sorry, I was doing, dealing with the sort of strictly, strictly structural and organizational questions. Um, I wouldn't fully agree with the last sentence about the East Zone divisions distinguishing themselves from all other units by their moderation. I think the picture was much more mixed and complicated than that. Um, some of these East Zone, among the divisions that came into Phnom Penh from each of the zones, um, Specific assignments were given to particular units. So some units were assigned to carry out executions. Some units were assigned to 
gather up war booty and other units were assigned to do patrolling. Um, and I think that was pretty much the same pattern across all the zones. And two and a half to three or two and a part to three divisions was a fairly standard um, formation for entry into Phnom Penh. So the distinction between from one unit to the next was not as a result of its zonal subordination, but the result of the specific tasking it was given by the zone secretary and or the zone chairman of the បាទគុណពលនិតដល់ពេលសម្រាក់ហើយអាមេរិកាសម្រាក់ផ្សេងទីចាប់ពេលពេលនេះទៅទៅលោកដល់ម៉ោង 3 ក៏ 5 នាទ